What's up everyone, welcome back to another video and in this one I'd like to stop and take a moment to say thank you because recently the channel hit 2,000 subscribers. So as a treat I figured I'd do a setup tour where I walk you through all my hardware, my desk, show you everything I'm using and how I have everything set up. So let's get into it. And before we begin, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's been watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff. It really means a lot to me to see the channel grow. And I really enjoy chatting with you guys on Facebook and um, seeing what you guys are doing with the videos and the, helping you with the projects you're doing. So I think it's awesome that you guys are taking the videos and applying them and doing cool stuff on your own. So again, big thank you to everyone. So now let's get into it. So this is my setup and what you see here, I've got just a big Ikea um, tabletop and then I I added the height adjustable legs. Yeah, so there's just a, I have a little button to raise it and lower it and I've got presets for my height and like the standing and the sitting position. So I'm just gonna put it back in the sitting position now because my tripod's not tall enough to uh, reach it when it's standing. But anyways, that's the desk. Um, the standing desk is awesome. I really enjoy it. It's I think it's helpful to be able to stand when you need to. And yeah, so then the monitor, which you see here, is a Samsung 28-inch 4K monitor. I, I prefer having the 4K high resolution. It's just like a ton more pixels. And that way you don't need like two or three monitors. You can just have one big monitor at high resolution and see everything you need. So that's the monitor. The keyboard is nothing special, just a Logitech wireless keyboard and mouse. I did have a mechanical keyboard, but it was just too loud for the videos. You could hear the keys um, clanking too loud. So I got this one just so it's not so loud. And the speakers you see here are M-Audio BX8As. They're eight inch um, speakers with one inch tweeters. They're pretty powerful, like 130 watts each speaker. So they can get super loud, lots of bass. And obviously I use them for music production. And the only thing is I don't do too much music production anymore since I've been focusing a lot on the YouTube channel. But but yeah, I have them for music production. I also have a M-Audio ProFire 610 audio interface. It's kind of an overkill interface, but it is a good quality, especially the inputs. They've got really good preamp, so um, yeah, it's for, it's useful for routing audio in and out of your computer. Plus, I've also got a Yamaha mixer for if I have some analog signals I want to send in, I can send them in through there um, if needed. So that's pretty much everything you see here. Oh yeah, there's also this MIDI keyboard for just import inputting notes um, into the piano roll for the music software. I wanted the smallest one I could find, which was this one. The keys aren't even full-size keys, but it's just for, you know, smashing when you're, when you're doing um, music production. So that's everything you see here. Oh, yeah, also the microphone is some Shure SM48. It's nothing special. It was like 40 bucks, but it's a decent microphone. So yeah, that covers everything you see here. So now let's jump over to the PC itself down below. All right, so here's the PC itself. So let's start with the CPU. So if you can see under this little thing that says Corsair, there's a i7-5820K. So it's a six core, 12 thread i7. The base clock is 3.3 gigahertz, but I have it overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz. Nothing too crazy. Um, you do get a little performance boost, but I didn't want to go crazy because it does shorten the lifetime of the CPU, but 3.8 is pretty good. So that's the CPU. The RAM that I've got, those two red modules there, it's 32 gigs from, I think it's Rip, Ripsaw, Ripjaw, something like that. So yeah, it's two channel, 16 gigs each, so 32 gigs each DDR4 RAM. RAM right now is like crazy expensive. Um, luckily I built this thing back when RAM was a lot cheaper. So I only paid like $120 for it. 
Now the cost is crazy. It's like $400 for a 32 gig kit, but hopefully these prices um, subside because it's just, it's just too much to build right now. So that's the RAM. Um, the CPU cooler is just a Corsair. Um, I think it's at H100i, something like that. But it's a, a liquid cooler, so there's um, you know water cooling in these pipes and then a radiator down here. Um, now that I look at it, I probably have this thing set up incorrect because the radiator's at the bottom. It's probably blowing the hot air up into the into the case. But even with it all set up incorrectly the way I do, the temperatures on this computer are really good. Like it never goes above like 55 or 60 C, even when I'm like 100% CPU on it. So all the thermals are really good on this computer, so I can't complain. And it's really silent. Like I leave the fans on the lowest speed. I can never hear it. It's nice and quiet. Um, and I didn't like go for the the super quiet case either. It just it just works out. So I'm I'm really pleased on that end. So that's the CPU, the cooler, the RAM. The motherboard is a um, MSI X99 Plus. So with this um, CPU, it's a X99 architecture. So you got to get an X99 motherboard. Um, they're a little more expensive, but you know you get those. Um, it's like those higher end CPUs. So um, you get more like overclocking capabilities and stuff like that. So pretty good motherboard, even though it did fail once, but luckily MSI, they honored the warranty. So I sent it back in, they sent me a replacement one. So it sucks that it broke, but I'm happy that they, you know, honored their warranty and sent me a replacement. So now let's talk about the star of the show and that's the GTX 1070. So this is the MSI one. And yeah, this is a great um, GPU for deep learning. It's a good one to choose. Obviously the better choices are like the 1080, 1080 Ti or the Titan. But for the cost, this is a really good choice because it comes with eight gigs of RAM, which is pretty good. And yeah, these 10 series cards are really powerful. So any of the 10 series is probably good. And the more RAM you can get, the better. So the 1070 is a great choice. If you can afford a Ti, a 1080 Ti, or even a Titan, then go for it. But you know, just get what you can, um, what you can afford. And like, same with RAM prices, the GPU prices are also crazy. So like I paid uh 380 for this card a little over a year ago, and now they're going for like seven or even $800, which is just crazy. So yeah, I'm really happy with the card and looking forward to the new ones from Nvidia. And maybe when those next series comes out, we'll look into upgrading. So that pretty much is it. I have some Firewire card over here, which I need for the audio interface because it still uses Firewire, but that's like just some cheap um, PCI card. You can probably see these red LEDs that I've got here. These were actually RGB LEDs that I had installed, but my soldering job was so bad that the, the blue and the green connection, after I had installed it, they, you know, shorted. So. All I have left is the red, but I'm happy with it because like everything in there is red and black. So the red looks fine. So I just left it like that. And what you don't see, um, right behind this panel, there's a, um, Corsair 750 watt power supply. And I've also got a Samsung 850 Evo one terabyte SSD, and then a, um, a one terabyte Western digital, um, regular hard drive. So, um, plenty of storage in here and yeah, that's about it. Then the case, you know, um, it's some Corsair case. It's kind of cool. Cause I don't know if you noticed, but everything is flipped upside down. The, the motherboard is mounted upside down. So I don't know, kind of cool. And then it comes with a, like a clear glass, um, side panel. So you can look into it when it's running and that's it. That's the computer. So. Um, if you've got the means, like if you've got the money, I highly recommend building your own. It's a fun thing to do. You get to customize and choose whatever you want. I know it can be expensive, especially now with RAM and GPU prices, but if you can um, build one, if not, you know, always check out used components. You can always get a good deal on secondhand parts. I always check Craigslist when I'm upgrading to see if I can find, find deals on it, but yeah, just go, you know, just get what you can afford. And as, as long as you've got something working, then 
you can program, you can do what you need to do. So, so yeah, that's it for the PC. So before we go, I want to briefly talk about plans I have for a future video series. So what you see here is a Lenovo ThinkPad T420S. So I bought this thing used for 50 bucks and my plan is to do a budget eGPU build. So what that means is I'm going to hook this thing up to a graphics card. So we'll have an external graphics card hooked up so that way we can run TensorFlow GPU with it. So I'm trying to build something as cheap as possible. So I already got the laptop for pretty cheap. I've upgraded the RAM from four to eight gigabytes and I've put an SSD in it and also replaced the battery. So about so far a hundred dollars invested into it. And then I've got a GTX 1050 Ti coming. So the total build is going to be under $400, even with the inflated price I paid for the 1050 Ti. So stay tuned for those future videos. I'm going to show you how to get it set up, how to install TensorFlow um, GPU on Linux, and how to get an external graphics card going with these. The reason why I bought it is because it has this um, express card slot. So you can get a express card to PCIe adapter card and then hook up a GPU to a, um, it's like an external PCIe slot. So they're ideal for that because of that express card slot because you don't really see the express card slot on laptops anymore. Um, otherwise, if you wanted to do this, you have to like pull out the Wi-Fi card and hook it up through one of those mini PCIe slots. So that's what we got planned for the future. Um, budget build, budget deep learning build. So stay tuned for that one. It's going to be a little bit more vlog style, a lot more um, just shots from the webcam and hardware related, but hopefully you guys like it. So thanks again for all the likes, comments, subscribes, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.